Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours for of course, the Scarender. And welcome, of course, to the LBA quarterfinals. Yes, we did, of course, make it. And we're going up against Necro Steva, which was actually our week two opponent in the LBA. So, to be honest, it's been basically close to two and a half months since we battled between one another. And uh, that's really cool. And his team actually changed a bit since then. One of them being that I, like I said, dropped Charizard X because it didn't really help my team all that well. I am now facing that Charizard X, and that is genuinely terrifying. Necrostevo was one of those people that I kind of bashed for getting. Because while he is a good battler, his team didn't really look the part. And I'll say like this, and I'm being completely frank by doing just so, he has shown everybody that he knows what he's doing and what he wanted to create and his team works just like that and he ending up being 8-4 and ending up in the third place in our division I like as my like myself I ended up in the sixth place barely making the cut so Necrostivo has shown himself to be one hell of a battler so if anything before I even go to my planning ahead here make sure to check Steve out he's linked down below of course on the link uh, tremendous battler and um, yeah like I said, he proved me wrong. He definitely, definitely did. And, um, alright, as you guys can see, he's bringing Mamo, Porygon C, Frelegate, Cubalion, Wimps, God, and Shards X. Pretty much the team I expected. Like, this is definitely, in my regards, if I had to say something, this is probably the team he needs to use to defeat me. Uh, so, I'm feeling prepared at the right spots, but at the same time, my matchup was not as good this time. Ooh. Sorry. Uh, since I am loose of Tangrove and uh, Tentacruel, cruel, uh, I am actually not that at good against him. Uh, so I'm using a Scarf Tyranitar, which has enough speed to outspeed Charizard. That's primarily what I wanted. Stone Edge kills it. Uh, Sister has Super Power, uh, Bullet Punch, and uh, Tailwind Roost. Tailwind is there to make sure that if the sand still can't go up, then hopefully Tailwind can keep them coming. And uh, honestly, Scissor is just filler here because, like I said, my mods really weren't that good for this game. So Scissor was probably the last one to make it because it can somewhat deal with Cobalion and Mamba Swine. Scarf Keldeo being, of course, of uh, Timid Max because I needed to tie at least with Cobalion and I needed to be faster than Charizard after one Dragon Dance. So he looks the part and has Hidden Part of Poison for Whimsicott. Uh, Stoutland, Badland, basically. And uh, Sand Slash is Life Orb set standard with Sandstorm actually to set up on its own if uh, I come to a situation where I can do it against Cobalion. It is Jolly also to tie with uh, uh, with a Scarf Cobalion. <laughs> and uh, Thunderous is uh, very very standard with Grass Nod. It has Yasha Bear this time because I forgot it last time I battled Steve-O, but this time I got it. This time I'm ready. So uh, yeah, but basically standard Grass Nod, Thunderbolt and Sludge Wave. So with all that said, let's do this. So we get the first matchup, which is of course Charizard against Tyranitar, and that's good. The thing is, I am in no position of going for potential stealth procs and stuff like that. I thought I might try to do it, but then we come to a situation where what if he goes for Dragon Dance? What if I'm locked in here and he can just sweep me? So I have to go for Stone Edge, and I think he gets this kind of nice on me, uh, and goes to of course Cabalion, and that's a crit, people. Four times resisted crit. Fantastic. So, obviously, I can't stay in, so Freedom Max is gonna be my response, overall response, really. And he predicts it's really, really, really good. Go for the Volt Switch. And uh, his natural cause here, and really his general idea, is to, of course, go back into Charizard and, of course, get that Mega Evolution going. Now, this is extremely unfortunate. This, I was really, really working to make sure this did not happen. But, well, let's just say that it did. And there is really nothing I can do. And I screwed up my EVs on my HP. I kind of see that now. Anyway. It <laughs> uh, like I said, there, since I'm Tim and Max Max, uh, I can still deal with him. And I'm glad he didn't go for Dragon Dance there. Because that means that he is not as threatening. And uh, Hydro Pump definitely can take him out from this range. But I decided that, alright, let's, let's, let's make that wild prediction. Let's go for Hidden Power Poison. I know it's extreme, I know it's kind of stupid, but if it's switching with a Whimsicott, then Kelio can pretty much sweep the team. And, um, mm, it's, it's so delicious. Like, these blind predictions just 
Mmm. Mmm, they're so good. And like I said, they're... I mean, had he stayed in, I mean, I would... I would be in such a bad position that, uh, hell, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. So anyway, it's gonna go to Oliver. Obviously, he gets it. I'm probably scarfed. And, um... I need to get out, and Kaysher is my switch in here, and he goes for close combat, and this does so much. Like I said, I am fragile, sad slash, basically sweeping, and when I switch in, disaster is due. But luckily for me, he does switch out here. I decided to pull a double here, thinking that maybe he will try to go for that KO, and if so, then bullet punch can do a minor amount of damage with Scissor. That really didn't happen, since it did switch out, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, it's not the worst position because I'm still somewhat good here. So I'll Mega Evolve, I'll just go for that hard hitting superpower. Because the thing is here, two superpower is enough to kill him, and he needs to go for the two dragon dances to actually defeat me. And um, that is the position I am in. So I decided here to I get the damage, you know, I'll push him down. I'll definitely do like 70% on him basically, and it does hurt a lot really here. And like I said there, I really need to go for another one. He needs to attack me to not fall. But at the same time, if it does attack me, that means that I have a plethora of that are faster. One of them is, of course, the Keldeo. So there is no ramification for me of bringing that in, going for, of course, Sacred Sword. And, um... Or Secret Sword. Sacred? Secret. Sacred. It's secret. It's a Secret Sword. Which is sacred. Anyway, uh, <laughs> obviously I do outspeed uh, due to me being Scarfed and all. So we do take that one out. He does not want to go into a position here where he could um, go to Kubelion and try to speed time me and try to take me out. So he goes directly to that. I decide to go for Rex here because I know I can take it on. I am in a good amount of HP. Shouldn't really worry too much. But here's the thing. He still have a lot of switches for my Dranitar. Stone Edge is a blind hit. And knowing that, I decide to go for Super Power because Super Power was the better option. So right, I'm just going to stop here. Like I said, there. The situation is, if he stays in with Shardzad, it's, it's very likely to survive and his retaliated move will kill me, but I knew it was gonna switch out, there was no reason for him of not doing so, so I felt I was in a good position, I really really did that, and well, I can just say it like this, Necrostivo is one ballsy motherfucker, I'm not even joking, he stays into this, luckily for me, Rex is like, nope, fuck you man, I'm going to give a crit then, I'm going to get a crit. And of course that crit does matter. It does matter a whole lot that that come to fruition. Because it was very unlikely that Tyranitar would kill it with a superpower. It just is that simple. So it definitely does suck for Steve over here. But uh, yeah, that is a major perk on my side of the field. Because that means I can sack Sandslash, I don't really need to worry. It's one of those really nice things here where... You know, the sand is still up, I can go into Stoutland and go for superpower. Since he's lost his defenses, I am now extremely dangerous. Um, he, he simply can't keep up with that kind of damage onto him. And Fulf is just a monster here. And I also screwed up his HP EVs, what the hell is wrong with me? Never mind, so you go to his arrow 404 and uh, yeah, that that's dead. Like, there is nothing on his team that can take any superpower. Now, I will obviously lose... Um, my attack and defense here, which means Cobalion is a safer option, and I am in no position now of actually staying in. I need actually, if I wanted to stay safe, I would have to force it down to 40% and go for return, which will kill it actually. But I need to get that damage on there. Now, I'll go into R class knowing that that's my best kind of option here. And here is my other option here I need to go for Grass Knot. No matter how he plays here, I need to go for Grass Knot uh, because. If he switches into Mammo, which is his other mod he got left, then it pretty much dies. And if you get, the, like I said, the damage here on the Cobalion, then this one is pretty much dead because that means that I can just go for a Sandstorm again and Tyranitar can, or Stoutland can wrap things up. So this Grass Knot does a lot of damage. Like, there is some serious damage. And I'll just try to go for a combo of, of course, Thunder Wave it. Uh, there was no reason for me not doing so because if I go for Thunder Wave, that means I can wrap things up with Kelio. Uh, that's why I went for Grass in the first place, because if I wasn't getting, or having this thing paralyzed means that I win the game, because that means Kaleo can sweep. But it didn't do that, and I think it did the right call there, he needed to be extremely ballsy. There was no position where Thunderous and, or that Cobalion can win with Thunderous alive, and I think he knew that. Uh, so, sadly, this is actually how the game goes down. Like I said, that massive 
uh, super power hit with a course transfer doesn't matter a whole lot. Now, I, it still would have been an open game. I would still be in a situation where where Kelly would have actually be my winning condition without any doubt in my mind. But it comes down to you know the simplest things, and I hate when crits kind of breaks through and make the games definitely easier because I definitely believe Steve played a mighty game here, and the game just definitely didn't want to help him at all here. So yeah, we knock out Steve here, and it's a bittersweet victory. It actually is. Mostly because I was really rooting for Steve, but once he actually started winning, and I actually look at his game, like, I, I started to understand what a tremendous batter he really is. And winning the game kind of took that ma magic away. Mostly because, like I said, I do win in, in a fashion that I believe is a bit, a bit unfortunate. I might have been able to take back the game anyway. But I think losing Dranitar would make this game a lot differently. It would force Steve to play differently. So it would be unfair to say that I had a game at hand, even if that didn't happen with the crit and whatnot. I, I, I'll I say, I, I definitely, I am an unfair person by saying that I did, because it's, the game might turn differently. And it's a very, very unfortunate crit. Uh, it definitely, like, I was definitely, to be honest, uh, I predict a lot blindly here, you know, the poison, hidden power poison against his whimsicott, definitely a blind prediction. Um, the superpower there, obviously, um, switching out to Sister against his Veraligator, blind switching, and it just all, all of them things go in, even the grass not in the end there against his uh, Kubalion. Bold predictions, and uh, only one hit, uh, hit back, like, the only one worked, and that was the first one I did. And um, those could be extremely painful for me if I, you know, if the series of plays basically forced me down, you know, obviously was part of the, the game, basically, I'm trying to find the right word, but basically doing that too much pretty much ensures that you lose eventually because there is no way that, you know, doing those tough predictions could gain you momentum if you're actually losing them. Um, but yeah, I think Steve had a good team here. I think that was the right team against me. And uh, I'll try to find the right word, but it basically comes down to that. I had a lot of power. I hit him hard. I tried to hit him hard. I was forced to hit him hard. This battle was actually no more than 19 turns. And uh, it's basically based on that. I knew I couldn't survive his stamina. I knew I couldn't do that. I needed to be aggressive. It, it worked. It, it definitely did work. But at the same time, Stevo was probably the one person that I would say that he was a worthy person person to actually continue to uh, to play off into the semi-finals. Now we are going to face uh, the Quebec uh, Betix uh, and Matt next round and that's going to be very interesting because he actually won against me at Jubilee week 3 so I really love that the two people I'm facing are really really long time ago and their team have changed slightly since then and obviously so has mine and I was glad that obviously the Charizard X was not a factor in this battle as not as much uh, outside of that crit, obviously. That was probably insensitive. But yeah, Stevo, thank you so much for this game. I really, really must say that you have been incredible battle throughout this season. And had I lost this game, I would not have mind one bit. You have made this this whole season a very, very good one. So good job on you, buddy. And for the next next like I said, it's gonna be Salon R facing out against Kubek Petix. And it looks like we can do a repeat. It looks like we can actually go to the finals now. Uh, wow, that was ballsy. But I, I definitely didn't think that I would be as, as successful as I did. So, if, yeah, with all that said, I want to thank you, of course, everybody for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye.